Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to start off with childhood, the concept of our main uh, first unit that we have in the book, my perspective, in relation to identity, setting, and character. And now we're going to look into the concepts that we have in the unit uh, that are connections, communication and settings, identities and relationship in a deeper context, which is childhood. And as we go through the unit, basically, we're going to answer a lot of questions. So what is a non-fictional narrative and what past experiences or challenges can you name that impacted your present day? So we're going to talk about the definition of character in terms of identity and connections till today. Now, as we move on to the concepts, the main concepts or to the key concepts, we're going to talk about identities and settings. And at the same time, we're going to talk about communication and setting in relation again to a broader concept, which is childhood. Starting off with identities and settings. So identities refer actually to characteristics, traits, beliefs, values, and cultural affiliations that define individuals or groups. These identities can be shaped by various factors, for example, including personal experiences and social interactions, historical context, and cultural background. The setting of a story, whether it's physical location, time period, or cultural environment, can significantly influence and shape the identities of the characters within the narrative. The way characters interact with their surroundings and the people they encounter in a particular setting can lead to the development of uh, or the transformation of their basically identities at the end. Now, to clarify what I've said previously, I'm going to talk about characters and an outline of a story itself. So, for example, if a character grew up in a rural village, they might actually develop strong connections to nature community values that in turn actually shapes their identity as someone rooted in a tradition. However, if we had a character who was born in an urban environment, they might be having a more of a basically individualistic identity due to the exposure to diverse, basically, cultures and fast-paced uh, city life. And now moving on to the second, uh, basically, most important part that we have, which is communication and setting. So they refer actually to the exchange of information, ideas, emotions, and thoughts between individuals or groups. Now, the setting itself plays a crucial role in influencing how characters communicate and interact with each other. So the cultural norms uh, and expectations, physical surroundings of a particular setting can impact the way characters express themselves verbally and non-verbally and even through their actions. Now moving on to the last part that we have in our lesson, which is the writing section. So in the writing section, we're going to focus on non-fictional writing. So writing a clear non-fictional narrative involves crafting a story that effectively conveys information engages the reader himself, herself, and maintains clarity throughout. And now to follow up with the uh, basically assessment criteria regarding the writing section. Now in the writing section, we have to focus on clarifying the purpose. So determine the purpose of your narrative all the time. So are you informing? Are you reflecting something? Uh, are you entertaining people? So having a clear purpose will guide your writing and ensure the narrative stays actually focused. Second of all, we have to focus on selecting a central idea. So choose a central idea or a thesis that your narrative will revolve around. Thirdly, you have to focus on organizing your thoughts. So you can never write random thoughts. Before you begin writing, outline the main points and events you want to include in your narrative. And that, in that basically way, this is like very helpful for you. We have to start with a strong uh, beginning, crafting and compelling introduction that grasps actually the reader's attention and sets the tone eventually for the rest of the narrative. Lastly, we have to provide basically context. We have to provide sufficient context for the events and characters in the narrative itself that actually helps the reader to understand the background and the significance of what you're trying to describe in the whole basically writing essay. And don't forget that the structure and the clarity of structures are very basically important too. So you have to follow a clear structure that includes actually an introduction, body, paragraphs, and lastly a conclusion.